Wow, okay. Locker contents. Fuck. This game is a lot, guys. <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, I'm pretty keyed up. On the way back from Lewis's funeral, my mom told me to start packing. She waited until the day before we left to tell Edie. I don't, can I go this way? No. I'm not sure if she wanted to make it easier or harder. I wish we'd stayed. Those are packing peanuts. But I understand why we left. Uh, so maybe Edie didn't leave. Don Finch Kitchen. Uh, but something happened. Like, they didn't... I feel like they didn't leave My as planned. Everything behind. Okay. Just because it was too hard? I mean, all of the scenery is beautiful. It's so detailed. What happened that night had been coming for a long time. Maybe it should have come sooner. But it had to end one way or another. All that's left now is to tell you about that last night. Okay. I mean, it's a paper version of the house. That's pretty cool. Paper versions of everything. She's gonna write her own story. That whole last day, Edie just Got watched it. his pack and didn't say a word. Until supper, when she raised her glass and said, to our final night together, and all our final nights apart. Grandma, you know what I said about alcohol. Some of your medications are very Eden, specific- I left a present for you in the hallway. Why don't you go open it? The grown-ups have to argue now. I'm sorry, you're right. We're all leaving tomorrow. Let's just enjoy our last- I'm not leaving. Edith, you're excused. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm Edith. It's very dark. The power had been shut off that morning, but Edie always had plenty of candles. When my mom sailed the library, I don't think she knew about the other entrance. Oh. Or that Edie had a key to it. you're afraid of isn't going to end when you leave the house. There's a cot and and a, a lit candle in the library. Edith has a right to know these stories. My children are dead because of your stories. I think it's best if Edith and I leave tonight. Oh, wow. I mean, I would, 
if if I didn't know that the house didn't burn down. Okay. The field of people, the houses, Milton, Lewis. History of the Finches. Dear Edith, there's so many stories I wish I could tell you, but there's only time for one. This is about what happened on the night you were born. That night, the tide went way, way out. The tide went way out. Oh, so I can get to the... It was the first and last time I ever saw the old house aground. There'd been an earthquake out in the middle of the ocean. They called it the lowest tide in a thousand years. God, it smelled awful. You know, I've seen that house every day of my life. But I never thought go back to it. When the fog rolled in, I lost my way. I mean, this seems like a really bad idea, Edie. I got turned around. I can't see anything. Did the game want me to turn around there? It probably doesn't matter. For a while, I wondered. I, 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 I started seeing things. I don't approve of any of this. Things I'd forgotten had ever existed. When I saw them, they felt like old friends. That night, a lot of things came back to me. Oh, oh it's the house. I okay, got it. Them. Good stories are made of bad Things ideas. I can't explain. That's profound, but I really Hubert. To try and... Edith, what are you doing in here? It's mine. Edith! Mom, you're gonna rip it! Let go! I kicked and screamed, but... Mom dragged me to the car. Oh, I'm, I'm a I person. I never saw Great Grandma Edie again. The next morning, the band came to pick her up, but she was already gone. After that, we moved around a lot. We both tried to make the best of it. I mean, I can't believe they turned that a into a game mechanic. Time. That's very good. What do I do with this? My mom didn't like to talk about it. Just look at it. But I want to blow it. Getting sick a lot. <coughs> oh shit! She got better for a while, and then she didn't. And then I was alone. The last finch left alive. Until I found out about you. I'm still not sure what to tell you about all this. 
If we lived forever, maybe we'd have time to understand things. But as it is, I think the best we can do is try to open our eyes. And appreciate how strange and brief all of this is. This journal was supposed to be for you. But now I hope you'll never see it. I just want to meet you. And tell you all these stories myself. But I guess if you're reading this now, things didn't work out that way. This is where your story begins. I'm sorry I won't be there to see it. It's a lot to ask, but I don't want you to be sad that I'm gone. I want you to be amazed that any of us ever had a chance to be here at all. Good luck. I think I've seen that picture before. That's a good picture, Ian. I have not seen that picture of Chris. That's very good. Wow, okay. Um, Sam! Shit! I did not know he worked on this. I gotta ping him. Um, I mean, that was really good. That was really good. I, I, hmm. I don't know that I wanted the game to try to explain the curse, but I feel weird about how it sort of failed to acknowledge it. Um,. And maybe that's a that's a framing problem. I mean, I you know I, the little that I knew about this game going into it, I read some of the marketing materials, and it talks about uh, a that that the family is cursed, such that only one person survives each generation, or something like that. I don't think that's right. That doesn't seem like it is, uh, it's what's going on in the game. And the game certainly doesn't sort of acknowledge it as such or, or describe it as such. I think it's, um, you know, there is a sense in which the family is cursed. And I think the, the family is cursed to tragedy, uh, in a, in a sort of a more general way. And, I I think that's that's fine. I think for it to be characterized that way is fine. And maybe that is what the game does. Uh, and it's just that I had this sort of like marketing expectation that that discolored it for me. I do think that like given the ending, 
here's maybe what it is. Given the ending, the ending is, as far as I can tell, is that um, Edith uh, Edith believes that she will meet some tragic and untimely end. Uh, and I, I think that she believes that because her family is cursed, because everybody that she knows uh, did, has met that kind of an end. Um, but given that that's something that that is such a part of her and her identity to the point where like that is how she relates to her child to her baby is that you know i expect that i won't get to meet you because i'm inevitably gonna die before then um i'm surprised that it doesn't figure more broadly into her, the way that she talks about other people i mean she she's kind of she's narrating her own experience of all of these people in her family that mostly she didn't get to meet and mostly she didn't really know their, their stories. But it, it seems like she must have known something about the tragedy surrounding them. And th that, that, I feel like that doesn't really figure into how she narrates those experiences and how she tells those stories. Um, I find that surprising. I, I And I thought that we were building to that. Like I felt, it felt like such a... Um, something that was missing to such an extent that I thought we were building towards it. And we, we didn't really. We built towards um, this is inevitable. And that inevitability sort of persists. Uh, and Edith knows it and, and makes some kind of peace with it. But uh, but isn't it doesn't attempt to explain it, right? Or or solve it, uh, or anything like that. <clears throat> Kyla says that uh, the game overall reminds me a lot of the movie Big Fish, which I totally see. Big Fish is a really interesting movie. I've only seen it once, and I did not really care for it. I didn't like it that much. Maybe because it's very close to something that I think I would like a lot. Um, I can't really speak to it that well just because it's been a long time since I saw it and I haven't thought about it very much because I didn't, I didn't love it. Um, but I think it does do something very similar of reflecting reality in, a, in an exaggerated and a sort of fantastical and a narrative way, right? Like, it's a little bit of a commentary on how we understand the world through stories and the kinds of stories that we tell about the world. Uh, and the world is more complicated than that. The world is, uh, you know, the world does not always conform to a, a, a tidy or satisfying narrative. But we, in our understanding of the world, often need it to and and try to make it and uh and bring that perspective with us and i think that this is a game that is very much about that about sort of understanding things that really happened uh through the stories that get told about them and i think big fish is similar right the the reveal at the end of big fish as i remember it is that uh, all of the fantastical stories weren't just total bullshit. They were reimaginings of things that had really happened, actually happened. Uh, and that that was sort of a revelation to the character. Um, you know, I think that's less... This is not about that revelation. This isn't about sort of the twist ending of... Um, you know, there's, there's actually something to these stories. More closer to the opposite closer to well not really because we start with molly and molly is a cat so 
from the from the get go, there's a pretty clear sense of uh, these are stories that are being reimagined, that are being reinterpreted um, or retold, and given sort of narrative dimensions that aren't necessarily aren't realistic. But I think both of the those stories are sort of are are playing in that same space. This one I I think I appreciate more. I think I enjoy this, and maybe it's because of I'm a sucker for this kind of um, what is this called? What is it called when uh, when you have multiple characters and you 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 sort of uh, you each character gets to play with structure and genre conventions and things like that in their own way it it makes me think of like um uh oh shit who am i thinking of um uh like as i lay dying uh is a book that we read in high school or uh I can't think of that. I'm blanking on the author of that book, which is insane to me, um, who also wrote The Sound and the Fury. Uh, and similarly, both of those books have, like, play with this idea of perspective and will change formally, will sort of, like, change their structure and their, their grammar, sure, but also, like, the way that um, words are presented on the page will change based on who whose perspective we are sharing right uh and uh so i always think of that as um as an example of this thing that can happen that is really cool where you know as you move from character to character and you get different perspectives the the work the media can shift like really dramatically in a formal way and i think that that's exactly what this is doing right this is for each one of these characters for each of the stories for each of their stories that get told they get told in a way that is visually and mechanically and narratively entirely different uh you know the the Barbara slasher comic book compared to the Gregory like uh, uh, underwater bath toy ballet uh, compared to you know compared to to Lewis in the cannery or to uh, Sam and the photography like those are such different experiences uh and their difference is exaggerated to reflect on the characters to to reflect on sort of whose story it is um i love that i think that's great i think you know a number of of anthology uh or um games that involve this kind of vignetting or diorama kind of play in that space a little bit um but this game does it you know does it very directly and does it very well i really appreciate that about this um there's a lot more in this game than i thought there was uh i didn't expect all of that difference especially like mechanically um but also in terms of like the visual style, it's this game does a ton with visual style. Oh fuck! You know what I should reference is apartment. Apartment is very is exactly. Apartment is very related to this game, uh, and I don't know how much direct overlap there was. Uh, huh. I'll have to talk to Robin. I'm curious if there are connections because I, you know, I think it's interesting that both of these games come at least indirectly out of the USC program and uh, they both are in development 
roughly in the same period um the development cycle for apartment was very long so the first versions of that appeared really early before this started development i'm sure um but uh but the final version of it you know i was probably 2018 2019 even i don't remember when that came out but um apartment very much does the same thing of like let's look at different characters through the filter of short stories about them that play with form and genre as much as they play with like narrative hmm mm -mm -mm. I, I feel good about that connection I like that connection and maybe that's that's part of what I'm seeing when I say that like this game feels like it came out of USC and it came out in the mid it was developed in the mid 2010s is that you know apartment I think came out uh, or or came out of USC and was developed in the mid 2010s and maybe even um, Outer Wilds like Outer Wilds is a very different game than this in a lot of ways uh but i do feel like there is some kind of connective tissue you look at outer wilds and you look at sort of this sense of exploration and going to different places that have that each have their own character and uncovering the narrative of those places through kind of unique interaction unique a unique relationship with that place that is reflective of the narrative you know in the outer wilds you go to uh you go to an ice world and you sort of uh you are you are following a story of the people who are trapped on the ice world and that's maybe not ex a great example Maybe I need to play Outer Wilds again. Uh, but you go to... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that's too much of a stretch. But I feel like there is... There is a, some kind of feeling that is shared between these games. Uh, that feels to me very of its time and of its place. Um, which is cool. I mean, it's cool, like, even if that's tenuous, that I can identify something I think is really neat. Anyway, this is great. This was less of a walking simulator than I thought. Um, because the walking simulator is really just the, um, the overworld, right? Like, the, the, the part that connects all of these short stories. And then the short stories aren't are largely not traditional gameplay like they don't fit neatly into mainstream genres but they are not they're not walking simulators they're they are different kinds of short experiences many of them you know one of the things that i think is cool is that they are largely not derivative uh i guess the like the slasher one kind of is and even the turning into different animals kind of is, but like the the Sam photography hunting thing, I haven't really seen that kind of thing before. Like that is not Umarangi generation. That is not Pokemon Snap. That's a different kind of camera mechanic than I'm used to. Um, Calvin Calvin swing was very simple. Gus's like kite was very simple but they are they're different like they don't really they they feel very original they feel very uh kind of um uh exploring new space uh i feel like this this game takes a lot of big swings um and has a really a really impressive hit rate given that it's like a mini game collection within a walking simulator. Kyla, yeah, that's that's interesting. 
yeah, it's like a mini game collection within a walking simulator. If you, I mean, I'm actually curious. If I hit this button, then I can I can select a person. What is the game doing? Is it connecting Edie with Dawn? I guess Edie and Dawn have the same story. And is Edith's the like, the overarching story? Or the last story? Maybe the ending story is Edith's. And the, the Dawn and Edie one is the last night where uh, where Edith sneaks off into the library. That makes sense. Um, yeah, because they didn't really have their own individual stories. Okay. Um, I mean, you know, obviously the game doesn't totally work if this is just the interface. You just click on different characters. But it's not that far off. You can sort of imagine constructing a game where you had a... a a direct level select screen and you were picking mini games and a lot of the content of the game overall would be there if you did that but certainly not all of it I mean it's not true that it doesn't need the walking simulator and the walking simulator is fucking great too like it is it's really really impressively detailed it is really good narrative space. The text, the text, the text, uh, like the pop-up that showed up that I wasn't paying attention to, the, the text over here that has since disappeared, it said select Edith to play from the beginning. I, that's possible. I would believe that. Uh, and the, the ending, the sort of like, Edith talking to her baby is maybe part of this, or maybe it's not a mini game. That doesn't count as a mini game. I would, I believe that. Um, yeah, Kubert says I feel like you learn more about the family and characters just by exploring the house versus each character's individual vignette. Yeah, I mean, like, there's a lot that's conveyed through the environmental narrative, and there's a lot that's conveyed through. Edith's voiceover, Edith's narration. Um, I, those are those are really important parts of certainly of understanding the overall story, right? Like that's where those get conveyed. I guess part of what I'm saying is that if you took the walking simulator out, simulator out, and this was just a collection of mini games of different characters that were sort of unrelated or maybe they they were only related by the fact that they all have tragic they all come to tragic ends that that there that's content like there is content there that is that that could be a game uh, that you could play and sort of find interesting and so I guess what I'm saying is that like this game, I got the impression that it was a walking simulator, that it, that it fit pretty neatly into that genre with Gone Home and Everybody's Gone to the Rapture and a Dear Esther, right? And and um, The Vanishing of Ethan Carter. I got to play those other games now because maybe I'm wrong about them too. Uh, but... I feel like this game is not that. This game incorporates that, incorporates that genre into it, uh, but kind of only as much as it incorporates a bunch of other genres too. Uh, and um, and none of them are, maybe The Walking Simulator is the one that is the easiest to name, quite frankly, right? Because what do you call, what do you call Baby Gregory's uh, uh, ballet? as a game like how would you describe that it's not easy it is so weird it's so different from uh from the genres that we have sort of defined that it it's difficult to talk about whereas the part of this game that is a walking simulator is a walking simulator 
Like, it's a very good uh, example of that genre. So, I don't know. Um... Hmm. Uh, okay, so Kyla says, um, when we played Dear Esther, we talked about the, uh, we talked a lot about the game feeling like a dark ride where you swept along through the narrative. Did you feel that sort of forward momentum here, or was it more of a traditional space exploration thing, at least in the house sections? Yeah, 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 talking about the, the walking simulator parts. I think that it was, uh, it was a mix. I think that, um... You know, it is not an open world. It doesn't feel like an open world. Um, it doesn't feel like the, that, that you know, you can go wherever you want. It, I think it's very clear that the game has you on a path. And uh, like, like Dear Esther does a pretty good job of directing you towards that path. Um... I think there's a there are a couple things that are different. Maybe the the biggest one is that the um, the the environment is just so rich, it's so dense in this game uh, that in Dear Esther, part of what pulled you forward is that there wasn't a lot where you were at any given moment like you could see there was something ahead but sort of by the time you got there it it felt like pretty empty and that's part of the whole feeling of that game right is this like lonely desolate emptiness um Whereas this game, like, you can see, okay, here's the exit to the room, or you can feel pretty confident that, like, there is a next place for me to go when I'm ready. But, like, there's a lot for me to look around here. This feels more like, um, I guess it depends on the museum. Uh, but there are, there are museums that are highly directed that have sort of, like, a way you are meant to go through them um, and this feels like that this feels like one room leads to another but you are not you're not pulled along in a way that feels like a dark ride the way that dear Esther felt like a dark ride you are you're kind of like you're exploring at your own pace exploring you're you're moving at your own pace through this linear uh, traversal and you're stopping in each room to look around and sort of like uh, try to get a sense of what's there because there is a lot there. That's my interpretation. That's sort of my take uh, on on the difference. But it is, you know, it. Yeah, no, I think that's fair. I think that like it's not open world. It's not. It's not. Uh, there's there are other ways to to handle that where you are just sort of like exploring the the room it feels more like gone home honestly like gone home is is more like that too is uh is you are traveling from room to room in a pretty prescribed order but it doesn't quite feel like dear esther because the loneliness of dear esther i think is part of what is is pulling you along um yeah um, cool. Well, that was rad. That was good. I, uh, that was a little shorter than I thought. I didn't know if we would finish it, but that's great. Uh, uh, like I, that was a good length. I like that. Um, fuck Hubert. Yes. Ikea. Ikea. A hundred percent. Ikea is what I'm thinking of. Uh, this is like an Ikea experience where there is a path for you to follow um, but you are not, you don't feel like you are moving through it at somebody else's pace. You, you feel like you are meant to sort of stop and appreciate what's around you as much as you would like. Um, yeah, no, that's really good. Um, okay, so, uh, there was a dragon in this game. I mean, I feel like there are a couple dragons in this game. There's like, there is a, the, the, there's a dragon that kills Sven and that was kind of fun and funny. 
Um, but there's something about like the the there's something about the house that feels like it is a dragon's horde. You know, like it is so big and sprawling and dense. Like there's so much stuff in it. And that it's kind of overwhelming. It's an overwhelming amount of stuff. Um, but it is also, uh, you know, it's also huge and sprawling and like, and it's also, um, it feels like it's hoarded. Like these rooms are locked off to protect the stuff that's inside. There's something that feels very horde-ish about that. And, uh, there's something that feels sort of ominous and uh, sort of like distantly threatening about the original house that's like you know the the little red light that's flickering in the in the distance that is um, calling to you. There's something that is sort of draconically. Uh, yeah, that that is that feels like it is that is casting a shadow over everything else in the way that you think of a dragon, sort of, you know, on a mountaintop overlooking a, a town or something like that. Um. Hmm. So, I, yeah, I feel like this game is good with the dragons that it has. Kyla says, uh, are there any of these vignettes that you'd, be, you'd want to try to pulling out into a full game? And I, I think I said it, but the, the Sam one, the, the, the photography one, um, I, I feel like it was handled in a way that I found a little bit confusing. It kept switching perspectives between Sam and Dawn and I, I wasn't following that really well. Um, uh, and obviously that was designed around the sort of the climax of it. Like it was designed to, to get you to there. But I think legitimately that game, that sort of like you are a photographer capturing moments and capturing sort of things from a particular perspective because there's something like that is a the, photography gives us that photography gives us this tiny little window into a moment in time that doesn't exist anymore and i feel like that mechanic is really resonant with that idea it is a it's a it's a little window into a moment in time um that uh, is really constrained and uh, and you're just sort of jumping from moment to moment along with audio drama. I found that really compelling. I found that really cool. I feel like you could do a lot with it. I don't know if it holds up like, I don't know. I don't know if it holds up a, even, even a two or three hour game. Um, but I think you could do something short. I think you could do something that was 45 minutes uh, that would be really cool. That would be really neat working with those mechanics. Um, what else we got? The Barbara slasher thing was cool. I feel like I have seen people do interactive motion comics and that kind of thing before. Um, like that is a, that's a whole form that I think you can do a lot with. Uh... Gregory's was great, but is is pretty like it is it is that story I think. Um, I mean, Lewis's was really well done, but I wouldn't want a whole game of it. Um, yeah, I'm, that's the one that stands out to me. I think is really is um, is Sam's Sam's story. Uh, if there were such a thing as a book dragon, this house would be its horde of stories. Yeah, Hubert, that's. I it didn't I didn't totally connect the the idea between this is a game that is explicitly about stories and storytelling, and 
one of the things that is most sort of the house is most full of is books. Uh, that's uh, that's a great point. It's a really really good observation. Um, uh, as a non-American, homeschooling also feels a bit like hoarding to me. Hoarding your family. Ooh! Ooh! Mamalart, that's really good. There is... Yeah, I, I was talking about sort of like the, the house being a hoard of objects, but I, I guess to play off of what Kubert said, like it, it is also a hoard of stories, and I think... The stories are the family stories. There's the, the, the sense of like... I mean, it's certainly not true that people didn't leave the house, right? Everybody, lots of people had jobs at, that they went to and stuff like that, even when they were living at the house. But you, you do get this sense that like that house is so protective of what is inside of it uh and to some extent that is like the the history of the people who were there and these rooms that have been sealed off um but i think also for dawn you know you look at sam and sam is so shaped by his sense of loss especially of calvin but you imagine also of all of his other siblings um and Dawn is so affected by him, right? Like Sam is shaped by all of that loss and then in turn shapes Dawn out of it. Uh, and then Dawn experiences tragedy after tragedy and becomes very protective, becomes just sort of closed in uh, and, and you know, rather than returning to, I mean, forget like going somewhere new. She comes back to the house. Like, I guess she went to India, right? It's not like she, um, but she was struck by tragedy. Something happened to her husband. Uh, she comes back to her house and rather than like, rather than going into the rooms that belong to other people, she builds these crazy additions onto the house. Uh, she's clearly very protective. She's clearly very like, she's very much about guarding her children. Uh, and I, part of the tragedy is that it doesn't work, right? Like, Milton disappears, Lewis disappears. It's got to be really painful. I, 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 that maybe is also a, f a flaw in the game, is that I feel like the, the final scenes... We get a lot of characterization of Dawn sort of by inference... Um, like Edith talks about her certainly and talks about some of her characteristics and we get a lot of like what it must have been like to be Dawn to live through all of these other stories that, that focus on other people um, and I don't know that all of that character and all of that like deep tragedy and uh, I, I, like I read a, a brokenness into that I read like Dawn is a is a tragic figure who has been battered who has been just sort of like uh and to a point where she can't she does she's not able to meet that challenge she's not able to let go of her kids she's she you know, keeps them locked in the attic, essentially. She teaches them, not that she's not caring, not that she's not, like, open or loving. She's She is very much that. But, like, her, her life has dealt her such blows that I think she is, uh, she 
she never is able to come to terms with them. And in the in the final scenes where we actually meet her, where we see her and we hear her talking, I don't know that I get all of that depth in the you know, I don't I don't I don't know if that is if the performance contributes to that. I think that the writing is maybe not all there. It just doesn't convey the weight of everything else that's come before. Um, and maybe that last scene would sort of, um, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know if it needed more power, like it is, the game ends well, I'm not upset about how the game ends, um, but I do feel like there's something missing a little bit there too. Um... You could do yes, uh, Kyla. You could you could do some more with Molly's game. Um, yeah, I guess that's not shelter. Um, it's almost like um, what's the name of that game? There's a there's a sort of funny little uh, indie. Uh, physics humor game called like catastrophe or cat 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 something it's a first person cat game where you like jump on furniture and swat things uh is is most of the gimmick i think like it feels like it feels like that and actually maybe that game frankly would benefit from having uh more levels where you play as different creatures too is it cat lateral damage maybe that is what it is yeah that sounds right that sounds right um okay cool uh this is great this was a lot of fun thanks everybody um i'll be back next week i gotta look at the games that i've got uh that are on my list and what's in my steam library um but maybe uh maybe i'll play another one of those on that on that list of um stuff in this genre uh or stuff that i think of in this genre like um uh, like everybody's gone to the rapture actually that would be fun to play and see after um dear esther or um vanishing of ethan carter i think is probably something that is more using using uh the form of the walking simulator and not necessarily just about that i don't know if that game has like puzzles or anything in it anyway um mm, oxen free is also on my list as a game that i have not played and should uh so i'll think about that too um cool cool awesome uh all right well thanks everybody this was uh this was great i really enjoyed it and what a good game what an interesting what an interesting experience um, thanks for joining me. Uh, everybody, please stay safe and be well and have a good weekend. Oh, actually, I don't have a time or anything. Hmm. If folks are around, I'll try to put something up on Twitter earlier, like tomorrow morning. Um, I think in the afternoon, I'm going to try to do, I'm going to do like a little prototype playtest of a Twitch integrated game. It's not you know it's not done it's not like a it's not like a real game or anything um it's just a prototype but uh i could use some people probably in the chat to play with me um and uh if that doesn't happen tomorrow or if you know it happens last minute and folks don't see it i uh i i'm hoping to do more with that kind of development so um maybe that will happen more regularly but um just, I guess, a heads up. If you see me come on, start streaming tomorrow, uh, that might be what it's about. Um, 
yeah, I'm not quite prepared. <laughs> I was hoping I would be a little bit more prepared. Uh, but we'll see. Um, if not tomorrow, then some other time. And, um, yeah, I don't know about Monday. I think Lee and I are going to try to do something in place of mostly walking at some point while, uh, while Sean is on vacation. But uh, it might not happen this week. Um, we haven't gotten ourselves together so um maybe that'll happen next week we'll see but i'll be back next week uh and i expect that uh we'll start a new game next wednesday that should be fun all right thanks everybody uh i'll see you i'll see you next time bye